You're going to want to see this. Oh, man, this is going to be good. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Wow. Look at that. I brought this home on a bicycle. Working in events since 2005, I've always been inspired by people coming together to share ideas. I'm Amanda Younger, and I'll be your host on Happy Hour, where I share a drink and a laugh with guests over stories and our hope for the future of the live event experience. Today, we'll be speaking with Kevin Abrams, team manager, filmmaker, cartoonist, and Sally Ann Thibodeau, team manager, model, singer, actor, performance artist galore. <laughs> a special shout out to From the Ground Brewery uh, up here in Hudson Valley. Uh, we'll be having brass monkeys, brass monkeys from our childhood, which are enjoyable. So make sure you find your favorite brew, uh, lager, and uh, some freshly squeezed orange juice. It will be delicious today. Be sure to subscribe and continue the conversation with us online at eventspeak.com. And together we can make the difference in live events. This is, this is a budget brunch episode. Yes. That's what's happening today. Good. We're actually doing uh, brass monkeys as the libation of choice. Yes. Uh, so, oh, actually, um, so uh, the premix cocktail uh, labeled brass monkey was actually produced by the Heibling Company in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. And uh, it was like a premixed bottled cocktail, fairly inexpensive. Um, and of course, their popularity went through the roof in the 80s because of the Beastie Boys and the song such as that. Um, anyways, uh, a lot of people actually um, got it confused. Uh, Wiley and incorrectly believe that the Beastie Boys were referring to a different drink made of a 40 ounce container of malt liquor and uh, mixed with orange juice. Uh, 40 is mentioned in the lyrics. Uh, so after several years of absence from the market, the Brass Monkey Premix cocktail has recently been re-released, the Club Brass Monkey, uh, produced by the Club Distilling Company in Stamford, Connecticut. Uh, you can also make this cocktail with part one part dark rum, one part vodka, one part orange juice, but we are doing no such thing. Dang, I should have. <laughs> and we are enjoying the Brass Monkey from our youth. Yes. I am drinking an American Pale Ale, small batch craft brewed, um, actually up here uh, in Dutchess County um, by the Migliorelli Farm. It's going to be fantastic. And OJ, I believe it's oh, Tropicana. Beautiful. Anyways, I'm doing this one. Can I share mine as well? Yes. Yes. What do you got? What do you got? Uh, I'm only the classiest of alcohols. I'll be using a Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. Yes. You are familiar with that? And yes. a, uh orange juice from my local key foods. Oh, I like that. Local key foods. Also, the word the, the slang word for that is a PBR. Yes. I don't yes. I don't know. Is that but... what the kids say? Oh no. I like to use the formal name, Paps Blue okay. Ribbon. Paps Blue we're past, we're past saying the, the, the P established in eighteen forty four. So fantastic. This is historically relevant. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, that's actually mm. really good. You know, I, I uh, after this mimosa sip, I could do it with a cider. I feel, I feel like slightly bad, but it wouldn't be on brand if I just didn't do my own thing as well. <laughs> <laughs> now we actually met. Uh, we actually met through events. So of course, you know, this is about events. So I'm talking to event professionals, been working with you guys before. Um, and uh, I think, gosh, I would also call Kevin uh, a box guy or my box guy, putting boxes on his back as yes. he walks around. A fantastic billboard. Also, I found out in that experience that I am, I have a gift uh, of handing out flyers to people mm, mm -hmm. i was born to do it and it was not a profession that i even it felt like it chose me and uh no matter what i did it was just there was something about it it's true might be my calling i think people were your magnet your your magnetism and they just kind of get drawn to you and you're like here have a flyer and they're like fantastic i love flyers I mean, sometimes they take more than one. 
It was crazy. They would they they come like to me. Eat. it out. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a player. Let's take one. I that, found it, was, it was, I had to wake up so early because uh, I lived in South Brooklyn and I had to take the D train uh, at like, f I had to wake up at like 4.30 in the morning uh, because I had to get the van um, in Greenpoint, which is North Brooklyn. But you basically have to go from South Brooklyn into Manhattan to get on the one line, oh, which is the L, uh, that will take you to North Brooklyn. And then I had to jump on like a G uh, to go into Greenpoint to then walk to a lot, a gravel lot with this van and uh, make sure that it was full of everything and uh, and then drive it back into the city so that I was there in time for like a seven o'clock start and then everyone would kind of like show up and change clothes and then I would have to like, oh, I gotta start counting everything out and then be like, oh, things have changed. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't distribute that. But distribute this. Get out there, you crazy kids. <laughs> Come back for lunch. <laughs> I have to make sure we don't get a parking ticket. I gotta, I'll be back. Circle yeah. around, circle back. That Did was you, when circle back was actually very literal. Oh yeah, I'll literally circle back with the car because who knows if I'll find a parking space. Might pick you up. <laughs> Guys, what would it take to get the old team back together? To do the same job again. Oh. How much would they have to pay you? Millions? They pay a lot. They have yeah. to pay a lot. But I mean, I say millions, but it would just depend. But it's also, you know, desperate times, desperate measures. Exactly. That's why I'm like, millions. Oh, would you say a couple thousand? <laughs> Do we come out of a pandemic looking for those gigs? Any gigs? All the gigs? Could be. This is true. This is true. Could be. <laughs> there were... Yeah, that that job just there's so many stories from that one and just for that one and that's yeah just that one. Uh, and, but Sally oh, Ann, we have yeah. one uh, you and I with elves. Oh yeah, yeah, you were an elf. You were singing elf. Didn't yes, I, I was the you? tallest elf you ever did see. You were. And um, but a lot of that was really fun. But it was funny because we're all dressed in these elves, and Amanda's driving a minivan around and uh we drove to um rockefeller center right you know when we could still do things like that she yep. dumped us out in the midst of the madness and uh we just had i had to herd this little group of of elves i don't even know if we had flyers or if we were just I don't think we did but it was a saturday when we were at rockefeller center which is Saturday Night Live time, yes. and my, my wonderful Christmas elves got caught up in the groupies for, oh, it was a band. Oh. Was it the one with Harry Styles? It was one oh. of the boy bands. It was. I was and almost I like, was like I'll never be able to get to my, how do I get to my elves? Beep, beep, mofo, beep, beep, out of my way. And they're like, and I just started yelling, we're getting to Santa, Santa. And so we got a little, little parting of the ways that way. <laughs> oh man, it, Christmas is rough uh, yeah. around uh, the Rockefeller Center area anyways, uh, just because it's a whole strip, the whole Fifth Avenue. Uh, everyone's going from, I don't know, it's just all of Midtown. You wanna go from Macy's, you hit up the Macy's lights there and the windows there. You gotta make your way from Herald Square all the way up to Rockefeller Center, watch everything dance, mm -hmm. um, and then head up Fifth Avenue <laughs> all the way up to like what? The plaza or something like that? Yeah. Um, get on and a little, a little carriage. <laughs> They must always have someone's timeline that has never really done that kind of thing <laughs> to a lot like, oh, I'm actually going to need three times as much time. And, and they're like, well, so can you be here in 10 minutes? <laughs> going to try. <laughs> and it's difficult because the agency is like, and when Google says you can be there like five yeah. minutes, ma'am. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> if you haven't 
haven't checked Google Maps yet, it's an amazing app. It'll tell you exactly how long this will take. The time is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> There's a police barricade up that Google didn't know about, <laughs> which is why traffic is all clear on that block. Yep. Did, um, how much have you been doing? What have you been doing? Uh, during COVID, have you been reflecting? What have you been, have you started up new hobbies? You haven't yeah, been, you go. How, how do you pay rent? What's going on? Well, my elves? I, play, I pay rent through something called unemployment. Um, I've been out of work since the first week of this pandemic. Was that so March? March, yeah, like March, the week of like March 15th. So, yes, so I've been at home a lot. Yeah. And uh, making a lot of stuff, a lot of free time. Yeah. So a lot of creative projects going on. You've been creative, Kevin? I have been very creative. Been drawing a lot of things. I have been uh, building a lot of things. I don't know if you can see this. A little felt person back there. Maybe that. Yes. <laughs> um, is it a puppet? It's not a puppet. It is a, do you want to see it up close? Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do not wear proper bottoms for this uh, interview. Oh, oh right. careful. They're better to just be bottoms. All right. That's what I'm wearing running shorts. As long as there are bottoms, I'm cool. <laughs> Guys, these are my running shorts. This is something that has been happening. Is I've been in my apartment a lot, so I've just been in running shorts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. every day for the last three and a half months. Flip-flops and running shorts. Uh, I learned this thing, Kevin told me, we were on a couple other Zoom calls together, and and oftentimes his screen would, oh, look at those shorts. Oh, hey, <laughs> hey there, skies out, thighs out. They, so the, he would black his screen out, and I was like, oh, what's going on? And he's like, well, it's one of two things. I'm either laughing uncontrollably, or I'm wearing short shorts. I had to, like, cross the screen. <laughs> It's an important thing. Uh, so I've been creating a, speaking of short pants, I created a number of uh, figures, nude figures. Uh -huh. uh, this is one of them. All the rest are up in my loft. Uh, you can see these little figures. Oh, yes. Little 360. They're fun. I think I saw a GIF that you made. Well, I think you just showed like a process of drawing them out and then coloring them and then um, animating them digitally. Mm -hmm. um, that was on, I think it was your Instagram. I'm not sure which one it was. That feels right. I probably was on my Instagram. Yeah. Oh, baby Instagram. Yeah. So doing stuff like that. Cool series, mm -hmm. aren't they? Clothed fleeple or are those? No, that one is nude. I'm not sure. All How now, many is this for have? something later where people tell you where uh, they point to where they were touched? No, <laughs> no, it's well, not. It's, uh, it's that therapy dolls. <laughs> Now, when they are, you're going to tell a story with them. Are you going to make a film with them? Because you are a filmmaker. There are a couple of your films on Amazon. If anybody is yeah. bored and really want to take in a musical or two. That is true. Mm -hmm. Should I say the names of them? Yeah. There is a musical called Manifest Destiny, the Lewis and Clark musical adventure. Which I made in with some people in 2014, Ooh. 15, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a little bit. That's on Amazon. And then we made another movie, which is not on Amazon anymore. It was, but now it's not. Uh, I think there's a link to it on my website, but that one's called If These Legs Could Talk. It's about running. That's the running one. That's where you got all the shorts. 
<laughs> the shirts. That's what inspired it all. Circled back. Idea. See with that circled back. It circled back again. Yeah. Did you ask the wardrobe if you could keep what you what you had? Well, I was wardrobe on that film. It was a small film. So. Yeah. Right. Wardrobe designer. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It was a very independent film. Um, yeah. So those are just for the heck of it. I did a couple like Zoom workshops with people, like creative workshops, and that was my project was making naked fabric people. I love it. Well, it used to be felt, and now you're making them a little bit more three-dimensional, which I enjoy. And is that like a future project? Are we going to see it into like, gonna create it into something else? I don't know. I think so. I've made yeah. like, I think I've made like, I don't remember now, like 12 or 15 of them. I'd like to make like a zillion of them. And Are these gonna be like the Thai babies of the future? They are the Thai babies of the future. Everyone's gonna wanna get a different one, you know. There'll be more rare ones that are worth thousands of dollars. Uh, limited edition. Limited I want the droopy doll. Ones that, yeah. With different costumes. Uh, no, I don't really have a specific purpose for them, which happens with a lot of creative projects I make. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm gonna make this thing with no real goal in mind, just right. to make a lot of them. So. Well, at least you're still like participating in the creative process. That's true. Right? Yeah. It's been fun. It's been a good way to use my time. When I've been stuck inside. Nice. And Sally, yeah. and the last time I saw you doing uh, anything super creative was in a tiny uh, studio. God, I had to walk up oh, it yeah. and you sitting and sat on people's laps. Yep. Oh, I, I was going to channel when you said the last time I saw you, it was like, it's been 84 years. <laughs> now, the last time I saw you, you were singing and dancing in a small like artist studio. Yeah. Yeah. That was out so chairs. And we all had to close the, the chairs once it was done. Mm -hmm. It was highly participatory for both um, the audience members and the a performers. Lot of engagement. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was this cranky cabaret and they, yeah, you're very encouraged to go way outside your comfort zone. Cranky cabaret. And, uh, and so I did, and I, yeah, I sat in a couple laps. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you're, it's like basically, you know, the front row is the splash zone <laughs> for all things that go on. So I, depending on, I think I warned most of you guys, like, you might want to sit a couple rows back. <laughs> Especially Kevin, I was like, you're definitely going to want to sit a couple rows <laughs> I sat like as close to the back row as possible. Yeah. Like, I don't want Sally to see me. Absolutely. Don't touch. <laughs> Maybe back here by the camera <laughs> where it's recording. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to have I want to have the view of uh, the um, direct to DVD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and that one also you there was an open bar and so yeah people had all kinds of good time and then yeah. similar to what we're doing right now you're just like sweating it out as you're there also yes right? yeah they're really uh they had to turn off the ac yeah. for the performance we had a lot of wine maybe from a box maybe not i'm not sure oh uh, yeah i'm sure and those nice box. like clear uh plastic disposable if you will oh yeah uh cups so you almost look no oh, never mind those ones weren't almost fancy at all those are just regular those no no stem <laughs> no just a... what is this? <laughs> but it was full-blown uh we had uh you had a piano and all sorts of stuff oh yeah yeah and a lot of those well with i think mo either you do a song that is not immediately well known or you were also asked to like change lyrics. I didn't do some, but a lot of people do a lot of parodies there, which is right. to me a very good time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was one of the last like performances I've had. In the meantime, creatively, I'm doing a lot of ukulele. 
Ooh. Yeah. And, uh, Are you in a and band? So, huh? Are you in a band? I'm in a solo band <gasps> where I sing and do the ukulele. <laughs> Are you gonna are you gonna show us a little? Did show I, us a little. I mean, I don't know. I, I suggested it. You were like, hell to I the did. I was like, or oh, maybe oh. we not. How about we skip over the ukulele moment? <laughs> but then I but then I had I've been refilling this. I have <laughs> air over here and maybe. I've been refilling it with the the brass monkey and uh, now it's eventually just gonna be beer. <laughs> uh, I mean that's kind of what's already happened with mine far less orange juice now and i'm like you know what i'm in the mood for a ukulele moment well i'm gonna i'm gonna surprise you then maybe let's see i hope it's tuned oh, oh yes oh, there it is there it is i mean if we saw a doll i've got, right? I've got, oh, I've got a ukulele right in front of me I can do it abbreviated. I don't have to do like the whole song, but yeah. It's almost like you were prepared for this moment. All right, here we go. 25 years and my life is still trying to get up a great big hill of for a destination. Out of COVID. I realized quickly when I knew that I should that this world was made up of this brotherhood of men. Black Lives Matter. Or whatever that means. And so I cry sometimes when I'm lying in bed and I get it all out. It's in my head and I'm feeling a little peculiar. Does the AC broken? So I wake in the morning and Like a pandemic. And I said, hey, yeah, 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 hey, yeah, yeah. I said, hey, what's going on? 2020. Snaps, snaps, all the snaps. snaps, 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 snaps so snaps. I guess my hobby that I entertain myself is like any song I hear, I'm like, what would that sound on the ukulele? Can you play fever? <laughs> I think this would be perfect on a ukulele. Yeah. I've done some sublime. <laughs> yes. I love it. I think any uh, 90s. Oh, yeah. Anything does well on anything. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of. Here's my kazoo. I'm gonna perform on my kazoo. Everybody ready? I mean, this is uh, smells like teenage spirit. You're kidding. I wouldn't. I you know, fast cars. I would listen to a good kazoo number on that. Mm hmm Why not, <laughs> Kevin? Maybe we should busk. You can kazoo. <laughs> How much training is needed for a kazoo? Just a uh, year. Just a year. This is gonna be a wonder wall. And a one and a two and a <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> All right, so we've done crazy things in the past. We've done crazy events. We've passed out flyers. We've put things on our backs. We've lost elves with mm -hmm. Taurus. Oh yeah, I remember you had to drop it at one elf. We had to give her a special drop off. That was fun. We had to get her, we had to get rid of her. Yeah, we had to drop <laughs> her off early. Another event. Sometimes you also, yeah, you work with people like, oh, I have this other event that starts 30 minutes before this one. Can you let me go? Can I leave? Key. <laughs> Pretty sure. Uh, was we booked for this, but. Uh, wait. <laughs> hey, bye. Yes, bye. Because you're clearly. <laughs> She's like, like yeah, so uh, I don't want to be an elf anymore, so I got to go. <laughs> Wait, I'll drop you off. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll never forget, like, you know, one day you, <laughs> when you gave me the reins for the box job, Amanda, and it was like the seventh circle of hell happened on that day because 
I mean, for this box job, pretty much something went wrong every day. Every day. Every great. day. And it really wasn't uh, us. <laughs> no, we were solid. This is a solid team right here. It was so good. But, yeah, so I was in Bring charge. Of Philip that. in. Hey, Philip, shout out to Philip oh, in yeah. Colorado. Oh. What up, Philip? Uh, and, uh, and so we're trying to make it work. And, of course, you know, I'm working directly with Kevin and Philip, my, my friends. <laughs> you know it's supposed to make the job easy for me but um we we're trying to do the best job we could kevin met a lady oh yeah well at first i tried to get pictures of them and they're like why do you want pictures of us now i'm like well just so we can make sure we're, we're documenting he'd show amanda we're doing our work <laughs> yeah and uh we we do that i also do the whole drive around finding parking spaces <laughs> and a, a fun thing about this job is like Kevin and Philip and I were pretty much the three people that stayed throughout the whole time. Yeah. So we periodically have a brand new person. And so we had a brand new person this day. I don't remember this person's name or anything. Either but, ass. You know, they oh, where just, this person came from. I think I'm sure they were late and I had to separate them. Okay, you go there, everyone wears these boxes, which is a backpack with five boxes. When we say boxes, like just and the wind Visually, would hit, and he'd go, Yeah. <laughs> so Kevin and Philip go over to their side, and of course, you know, yeah, spend some time greeting a beautiful woman. <laughs> very friendly and seemed very interested in our flyers. I'm just, yeah. just trying to get her signed up for some storage that she really was needing. It was one day I had to do one other job. I'm like, hey, I just need you to cover for this one day. <laughs> it was like all of these phone calls. Yeah, and so, so the the client oh, they're all gone. A surprise, uh, a surprise drive through, which we know they'll do, and we're doing trying to do the best job anyway. But like, <laughs> when you have somebody that you've never worked with right. on site, you don't, and and they have to go multiple blocks away from where I am with the car. I'm not totally sure what they're doing, but I'm assuming as a professional, you're doing your job. But I immediately get a phone call that says, oh, the client just drove by and, or maybe it was the client that I was talking to, I don't know. Or if Amanda was being contacted at her other job, whatever she was supposed to do at the time. And they said, well, we just drove by and they're just talking to each other. And uh, yeah. I said, okay, well, that's probably not, I think Kevin and Phil probably doing their job. So I'll go spy on this other one go and look and not only is he talking to another one of the co-workers but he is wearing the boxes leaning against the handrail to the point where his butt cheeks are on either side of the handrail so he's, he's supposedly rattling it that's right representing oh, this man. company you wow. sent me the photo you're like yeah, oh my God. Yeah. yeah his balls are on a thing <laughs> Like, there's no way you're going to think this person is not part of this company. <laughs> yeah. And so finally, when they call me again, I said, you know what? I, I'm fine firing this guy. Like, he just came to work for us today. And they said, okay, fire him. I said, fine. Because, you know, you're going to do, do a lot better work when you don't have someone just lagging the whole time. Yeah. And they so I fired him. And that way. He didn't leave. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> him and he's so oh well, get out of here and he's like i don't want to go it's for my next shift for a while and so i turn around and he's still talking to this other employee we had yeah after being fired yeah never left i was just like amanda i swear i'm better at this than it appears today <laughs> i just huh. <laughs> Those people make me feel both like worse and better about the jobs that I do. Like, like, oh, okay. The times where I think I'm not doing a great job, like the bar is so low, actually. <laughs> and actually, it's not that high. <laughs> Just please show up and like do the thing, and then you go home. Yeah. And for whatever reason, nah. I actually, there are, and I talked about this in another one. I have volunteers. I have volunteers that work 
so hard. They work as though, I mean, and they have like no other incentive other than they are really happy to be there and they get a ticket to go see, you know, Madonna or something like that. So they have something cool at the end of the, at the end of the, the end of the whole thing but that's it like they're not getting paid yeah. so you think like oh well if i'm paying somebody like they're gonna they're gonna do their thing so that they can pay and keep their lights on no no, no. there is that is a very weird disconnect because i yeah i would say volunteers i'm sure work harder a lot of times yeah it's not well, say we love money please it's the love. same it's the same with both. I think uh, you get the good and the bad, whether you're paying them in tickets to another event or if you're paying them in actual cash. Well, that's true. If you were, yeah, for volunteers, if you were, they were still getting to see that event and that singer. Yeah, there's still there. like a benefit. You still get like a cool shirt. And I do not. Event. But like still. Oh. Okay, Google. <laughs> Turn off. What? Turn off. What well, is Google then, playing? I, think I don't we just know how got... we activated that, but... Oh, man. Was that a, a smart device really trying to get in on this? Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Was it My Google? Hey, totally hey Google, me. turn on uh, Top Pop. No, she didn't hear you. Oh, uh, well, that's good. Top Pop. Hey, Google. Hey, Google, play Party in the USA. Hey, Google, play Party in the USA. Hey, Google, play Brass Monkey. By Miley Cyrus. Sure. Playing on Spotify. Sure. There it is. Hey. Wait. Do we just... Do we have to bleed out, bleep, bleep out the advertising? All right. Well, now you have to turn her off. I can't play the music. I can't pay the music rights for that. You got to turn her off. Hey, Google, turn her off. Hey, Google. No, Miley Cyrus, no. Although that is a really fun song. Really makes me So sick. many rights, so many rights that just happened and, and, and product names and <laughs> you're going to have to cut all that. Eh. <laughs> we'll Can see. you call it just farty in the USA and then we're okay? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you hoping? So uh, out of all of this, let's. Oh, we're gonna go back to events, and what is it gonna? What's it gonna be? What are you hoping for? Uh, what are you? What are you hoping you come back, and what are you expecting, and what do you hope is solved? And uh, do you even miss people, Kevin? I don't think Kevin misses people. I <clears throat> I do miss people, although I have been socially distant social uh i did briefly exit the city so i saw my family i did a cross-country road trip which was very good very strange to people you went to right cross america all the way to oregon all the way to oregon nice the roads not busy i stayed in hotels that were basically empty yes. uh but Claire, he did this recently to all the folks out there. It wasn't the beginning of the pandemic. No, 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 no. Just got back the other day. You gotta save these things. Must... You gotta save these things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I have found clever ways to uh, be social with people. The, the apartment next to mine is like a walk up, and it has been abandoned for like 15 years, which means people can sit on the stoop of the apartment next to me and we can shout it. Well, we don't have to shout at each other. We're close enough. You can just talk, but it's, you know, you can sit six or 10 feet away from each other and hang out. Nice. I like really it. Nice. It's, it's been nice that during this time you've asked me to come over multiple times to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And she said no every time. Have you really? No, she's been in my once. You Come on over and hang out on the on the neighbor's stoop. Not, he has not asked me to stoop one time. I don't want to be a stoop no. friend. I did one time. No. I was like, Sally, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm back in Manhattan. And I was like, Well, I'll be back in two weeks. And I was thinking, I'll be on the road. Again. Gotta keep moving. Gotta keep going, Kev. <laughs> Gotta keep doing it. Making the moves. 
Gotta get up, gotta get up. Get up in the morning. Gotta get up to get down, was it? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> oh, man. Great. We're killing it. I love it. Um, what was the original question that you asked us? Uh, so, during this time of recovery, uh, for events to come back, like what are you hoping for? What are you expecting? Mm. That's a good question. Um, I am looking forward to and hoping that there will be events again in a time sooner than like a year or two from now. 2025. That would be nice. Uh, yes, it will be nice to go outside and to attend events and see people. Well, I mean, I even saw you perform, like there was an event space behind a bar. I forgot what bar it was, but you had to go through the bar to go like downstairs or upstairs. I forgot. And then there was like, where was it? Oh, the one at Dixon Place when I did the puppet dance show and I got. Yes. Yes. I burst out of the, out of a fifteen foot tall puppet. Yes, that. When yeah. do you think we can do that again? Oh man. People have to come and see you. People have to do these things. It's considered a public gathering. These are events, and this is like you create and perform. And like, what are you expecting when people come and see you and? Less interaction. You definitely can't do the cabaret, the cranky cabaret where you're sitting on you know, the Yeah, singers, they're pretty screwed for a while because yeah. the whole nature of singing is the air coming, you know, <laughs> up from the top. And, uh, you know, and I think that very early on, like it went in Washington, a choir decided to meet anyway, and they, like, definitely got uh, everybody sick because yeah. that's just, like, spit. Yeah everywhere yeah but I, I feel like i mean we're still in new york on early stages of opening so we can't do this stuff anyway but like in warmer weather we could do events where people you know trusting people to actually be respectful of space which yeah not every new yorker but a lot of them are um you could just do some outdoor things i actually saw my local brewery uh queen's brewery actually I can give it a shout out they had an Instagram live the other day and they had a little uh, jazz band outside. Okay. And um, the only person not wearing a mask was the trumpet player. But then you, you stand, you know, very far away. You can hear a trumpet for forever. And, mm -hmm. But then everybody else was wearing masks. And I think that's relatively safe-ish. So, yeah. you know, and there's the hardy buskers out in Central Park. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, do you so think that, that's, that's going to be the future? Huh? I mean, do you think at least in the short term, like, because both of you have performed in intimate spaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Uh, but you guys have never performed, well, I don't know, you tell me, um, performed like actually on the street. So do you think there's going to be more street performances? So like performances that have normally been in intimate uh, event gatherings that they would move to more outdoor spaces? I think there definitely could be because there's more, there's more, I don't know, security is the wrong word, protocol that can be put into place for that kind of thing. And like, if you're outside, people can just spread out to their heart's content, ideally. Right. Um, and so I, at least while the weather is nice, I see that that could be a high possibility once again have to still obey whatever mandates are in place um, yeah i'm just trying to think like we actually paid like one like you would you'd pay like a small admission fee and then you have a two drink minimum for the bar that was the venue mm -hmm. uh, and then that was how everyone got paid uh so if you did like an outdoor thing um you know what you know how can people get paid <laughs> how do you get your is it like hey now uh i just bought a whole bunch of top hats 
and those are gonna be coming around the room. You know, like, a lot of places. The church are, guy with the basket and he like, <laughs> with the lawn. Right? Kind of, uh, um, honor system, like just Venmo us what you you know if you can help. Right. This is the Venmo. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't have numbers to see how that's actually working out for people mm -hmm. in places, but there is a lot of generosity out there and it could be a possibility where it's like, mm -hmm. you like what's happening. You can pay us. I mean, for a while it might not be something we can immediately monetize. Like this is the price of this ticket right. because right. yeah, people are just not going to event events as they, they, they shouldn't be. And we don't want to draw all the people into one space, but you right. know, if we can figure out somewhere where things are spaced and then have, this is the Venmo if you want to support. Right. Then, and it's mostly for our creativity sake as well, you know, do that. The kazoo and the ukulele is all in this Absolutely. Play. We can yeah, I know, um, uh, right now there's a, I don't, I, well, I don't know. Cause you guys are closer to like Bushwick and stuff like that. But, um, in Williamsburg, there's Pete's candy store and they always have this very difficult trivia night on Wednesday. Um, and they have translated it to a digital form on zoom and uh and then they have a venmo account and it's like hey uh just to keep this going um because pete's trivia was always done by the bartenders and you know like the wait staff of you know this establishment we want to keep it up and going send us venmo to this account blah 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 and uh they raised um they they hit goal uh pretty quickly to keep the bar up and running and then to also keep them from um i think uh to keep them uh, i think the wait staff was paid through that rather than them having to apply for a ppe mm -hmm. i'm not sure i think there are there are things like that where people really have yeah. been the ones that can be generous have been yeah. like i think that's a great model like yeah. If you're able to take care of your neighbors, take care of your neighbors. Yeah, if you got to keep doing it digitally, then like yeah. have a Venmo account and enjoy it digitally. Oh, yeah, and there are a lot of different digital things that I just haven't delved into. Like I have a friend, his name's Matt Baker, and he's a jazz pianist. He's awesome. And multiple times a week, he has a whole setup from his apartment with his mm -hmm. grand piano and yeah. um, good sound system. And it really is, I mean, it's not quite the same as going out, but it's pretty close you've got a great pianist and sometimes he sings and it's just and then you he has his venmo and cash app or whatever and people I like it they do that well i am looking forward to finding out that you guys send me some invites ask for some venmo for me to send to you uh so i can see some of your creations because um i know events uh, are a good way for your uh, performances to be seen by others. So hopefully we can find new ways uh, for you to get that outlet and uh, send an audience your way and uh, hopefully you can pay rent with it. Um, because I hate to keep uh, hiring you guys to pass out flyers because you're worth so much more than that. Uh I, uh, I know you're trying to end, but that makes me remember another event, speaking of being worth so much more <laughs> with all the stories, but I, we, there was a- Say goodbye, so I got one I more story for like, you. I was like, I see you trying to end this. <laughs> but I have six or seven more things I'd like to say. <laughs> exactly, I do. I just remember um, one of our other coworkers had this story where he's passing out flyers and this dad brings his daughter up to him and looks at him looks at him like he's not a person looks at his daughter and says see this is why you get a degree everybody on the job had a degree some of them master's degrees yeah yeah some people have masters, and the person he said it to had a master's degree weird so yes don't, I mean, go don't love to do the flyer jobs at all but you know, if you see people out on the street doing those things, they probably have multiple degrees. Multiple degrees. 
I'm just <laughs> trying to keep it down. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for coming on. My breast monkey is empty. Oh gosh, it's taken me so long to drink this. Sally Ann. Good. <laughs> What's funny is I did a, oh my God. No. <laughs> That's the wrong thing to do. Everybody. That was good. <laughs>